Welcome back. I'm Tyler. You're watching Scarfing Scarves and welcome to yet another installment of This Is Not Last Week Lolita News because this reporter was invited to Pittsburgh for Teco 2019 and now you all have to suffer while I regale you with every agonizing detail. So without further ado, welcome to Teco 2019 Special Report. It all started in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I had been invited as a guest for the Pittsburgh Anime Convention by the name of Teco to be held at the David L. Lawrence Convention Center April 11th through 14th, 2019. I'd already received word that Lovely Lore, Holly, the Lolita Collective, and Fracking Angelic Pretty would be in attendance. And needless to say, the only thing that was going to keep me away from the Keystone State was imminent nuclear attack and or resulting annihilation of the entire eastern seaboard. That or a broken plane, but at that point I'd start walking hoop skirt and all. My flight over was mercifully uneventful, and after checking in at the front desk, I managed to haul all my luggage up to my room to discover a cozy space with a fantastic view of the city outside. A view that included a large king bed, a bed that was apparently supposed to suit the needs of myself, Lore, and Holly. This left me with three options. One, cajole the clerk into giving us a room with two distinct sleeping spaces. Two, camp out on the floor and leave the couple with the bed. Or three, lock the door and beat the Canadians off with a stick. Option three could have led to an international incident, two would have resulted in back pains, and one worked out rather quickly after explaining in painstaking detail the sheer awkwardness of having to share sheet space with two people I have absolutely no intention of knowing in the biblical sense. Something died in that clerk's eyes that day, but let me tell you, he assigned us a different room. Laura and Holly arrived shortly after things were squared away, and upon settling in, the three of us set out to do what had to be done as YouTube guests at an anime convention. We took brutal advantage of our position as women with cameras and walked right into the exhibitors hall that Thursday evening long before the public would even be able to sneeze in its general direction. Which means I got to see the angelic pretty booth before anyone else. And it was glorious. <laughs> Racks full of brand, tables full of headbows, socks, and accessories, there are few things beyond illicit substances that could compare to the feeling of seeing an entire shop's worth of AP laid out in person. What memory files weren't corrupted by the absolute overload of brand in front of me vaguely recall being waved forward to look at the JSKs, and I proceeded forth with all the dignity such hallowed ground truly required. Which is to say I made several noises that resembled words and proceeded to lose my ever-loving mind at the sheer variety of angelic pretty on display. I held angelic pretty in my hands. No waiting, no shipping, just real live JSKs, headbows, bags, and accessories before my very eyes, all waiting to be yanked off a hanger and ran up to the checkout stand like an African lion with its kill still fresh in its teeth. Gruesome image, I know, but if you think for a second that I won't go full National Geographic on your ass if you get between me and my first in-person purchase, you can bet we'll make the local news or die trying. That said, as much as I could have stayed there for several hours and or hidden the racks until no witnesses remained to stop me, food did have to be tracked down and we did eventually get some great setup footage before heading out. This wrapped Thursday evening up quite nicely and we went to our thankfully separate beds to prepare for tomorrow's assault. When it was go time. Not being able to buy anything until the actual first day of dealer operation at the con, we used every bit of intel we'd gained from Thursday's scouting mission and stormed the gates long before the general public knew what was coming. The dealer's room would open to said public at 11.30. No sales could be made before then. And we rolled in at 11 a.m. to film the completed booths before attendees could run them down like so many wildebeests. That and take brutal advantage of my position as a guest to scout out the now finished AP booth, hone in on my kill, and be first in line at the register when the hall opened with all the shamelessness of a woman who would sooner toss someone off a cliff than let any qualms about equity get between me and the spoils of war. All's fair in love and Lolita fashion, I got fantastic footage of the AP booth before it opened, and those of you wondering what the heck was worth my honor to snag before the general public was even let in, should know that my soul's going rate is currently at one berry necklace, a pair of socks, and an angelic pretty bag. This is currently all it takes to buy my dignity. It's beautiful. Seriously though, I lost my shit, and as my purchase was complete, I had about 20 seconds to misplace my marbles before the clock ticked to 11.31 and the peaceful quiet of the dealer's room was split with a cacophonous roar. The Lolitas had arrived. 
First in twos, then threes, then fours, their ability to multiply soon overwhelmed the AP booth, and deciding that it might be safer to watch the attack from neutral ground, I moved into the walkway to take in their progress from a place less at risk for a sudden stabbing. There are a few sights more intense than watching a freshly assembled AP booth be raised to the ground, and when the assembled horde was finished, two things were clear. One, that Angelic Pretty is serious business. And two, I'm not entirely convinced that this fashion shouldn't be classified as a class to narcotic. To drop the shtick for a second, being able to buy something from AP in person was a highlight of my existence, and watching the excitement of other Lolitas descending on the AP booth to do the same in full regalia is something I will remember for many years to come. It wouldn't have been possible without you guys continuing to watch this show, or without the recommendation of the Lolita Collective on my behalf, and I want you all to know just how much I appreciate the support you've extended throughout the lifetime of this irritable pile of salt. That said, turning back to the horde at hand, after grabbing enough footage to make an installment of When Lolita's Attack, the fashion show had to be attended to, and fortunately for us, we had the opportunity to see the cords before they hit the runway. This allowed Lore to get footage, and in my case, to stare at Fleur Cat and Unbirthday until they were imprinted into my very soul. I'd like to take a second to give a shout out to the makeup artist in attendance. The models looked absolutely brilliant, and being able to see their finished looks up close was something I hadn't expected, but was really glad I got to experience. It also cemented my resolve to never be in a fashion show ever again, wearing a dress that isn't mine, waiting for two hours and then stomping across a stage to have an HD camera document the entire shebang gives me the hives, and any cons that want that from me should know that they are barking up the wrong sequoia. Yes, that was a tall person joke, no I am not sorry, and those of you who have a problem with that are welcome to branch out into other channels. Luckily for the models, it was soon time for them to be marched out on stage, and as Lore, Holly, and I settled into front row seats for filming the action, we were treated to great looks from OtaQ, Lady Sloth, Ghost Girl Goods, New Eds, and finally Angelic Pretty. I Want Candy by The Strange Loves filled the room as the AP models walked the stage, and while I maintain that the actual meaning of this song remains unknown to whatever AP staffer picked the track, it did provide a cute backing to brand looks with just the right amount of surprise lesbianism to keep those paying attention on their toes. Or at least it would have been surprising if it hadn't been played three times in a fracking row. I'm not joking. By the time the third rendition of I Want Candy hit the speakers, half the audience had auditory cavities, and the rest were now personally familiar with the illicit cravings of a 1960s lesbian with banging on the brain. Jokes aside, this is apparently not the first time Angelic Pretty has done this. We have similar reports from other countries, and we can only hope the UN intervenes, seizes their song privileges, and demands they play something that doesn't qualify as a form of advanced interrogation. The Branch Davidians got more variety, and godspeed to anyone who yeets AP's jukebox into the nearest hotel pool. Going to end this bit before any of you have time to actually let that joke sink in, onwards to Saturday morning. Given that Saturday was the day we had the most to do, the three of us got up bright and early to film the second wave attack on the dealer's room, get up close footage of the great booths from designers like Puvithal, Lady Sloth, and the offerings of the Lolita Collective, and for me to circle the AP booth like a tiger shark until it was time to buy my very first in-person JSK. The experience of buying that frock directly from the rack is something I will keep in my AP-obsessed heart until the day I choke on my last Cheerio. And for those of you wondering what could cause such religious zeal, I am happy to report that I am now the owner of not one, but two egg dresses. Partially out of spite, partially out of the fact that AP had the flower egg garden OP in pink on display, and I had the self-control of a rodent. It's so beautiful though. <laughs> Look at it, it's got little blue eggs. The lavender one doesn't have blue eggs, okay? Fight me. It's beautiful. It's so pretty. Okay, I have to put it down. Ahem. <clears throat> I managed to regain enough of my composure to film more chaos at the booth, follow Laura and Holly to the roof, and take pictures that I don't have because I am a bad YouTuber and my priorities begin and end with acquire more brand. Afterwards came the AP Q&A, shout out to Sarah for translating everything so well, and Laura and I's own Q&A was conveniently located in the same room so we didn't even have to move. I want to take a moment to thank everyone who attended for their questions. I think I can say with confidence that we both had a great time. Moving right along, after the q in a, we had been scheduled to do autographs in the exhibit hall. I was expecting it to be me, a pen, and whatever tumbleweed happened to roll by. And as we walked up to where our table was set, the last thing in the world I was expecting was for there to be a line. A big line? 
a line that, defying all reason, had to be cut off so that we could leave the vicinity some hour and ten minutes later. I am not entirely certain that this wasn't some kind of fever dream. No amount of on-air sugar and salt makes sense in summoning that many people of their own free will. So I have to ask. Were you offered free snacks? Blink twice if someone offered you Cheez-Its. The defining moment in that experience was being asked to sign a BB&B &B bag, and as the session ended, somehow managing to forget my own name post-writing it some 60,000 times. Pretty sure it started with a T. Either way, we had to beat feet quickly because the next stop was Bill's Burgers in the hotel across the street. That place is fracking amazing, by the way. And finally, the roast and toast panel at 8 p.m. Whereupon we went to the wrong room, lacked a laptop, to do it with, received one from a lady sloth designer, couldn't see our projector, cut the lights so we could, and then raced through the entire thing in the dark because our brains were in fight or flight mode and the only option we had was run and gun until we ran out of slides. At which point we were royally fracked, started roasting and toasting audience members, and what bits my panic-saturated brain can remember include my saying things that my own mother may have cut me out of the will for uttering. There is something deeply wrong with me, but even with all that devil-may-care attitude for human dignity, we still had more time than content. And that's when something amazing happened. The audience began to roast us. It was a turning of the tables that couldn't have come at a better time, and for the last ten minutes we were treated to our own personal storm of salt. The absolutely packed room had plenty to work with, and it was a real joy to see the audience participate in our panel so wholeheartedly. Laura has since spoken of including that portion as part of any further roast and toast, and I look forward to see what you guys can come up with in the future. Be advised that Laura also cut out my responses. Please be advised that I will verbally bite you for the favor. The panel had been a huge success, and that energy carried over as a full-scale dance party broke out in the J-Fashion Social afterwards. I feel like I witnessed a happening. Sunday was the day of the Intergalactic Gala, otherwise known as the Lolita Tea Party that was held in the Renaissance Hotel in downtown, and my first impression of this place was simply wow. Complete with a mirrored gold entryway and a grand staircase, this place did not disappoint in aesthetics, and when we got to the massive room where the tea was situated, I was equally impressed by the sheer number of Lolitas in attendance. Not that I had much time to be shocked at that, as I was led over to the guest tables, and it soon became clear that I would be sitting with Kira Mai, the person behind AP Candy, both Lady Sloth designers, and the AP designer herself. To be inside my head at that moment was to have imposter syndrome loaded into a cannon, packed down, and fired into my cranium at the speed of sound. I am not supposed to be here. I can't believe I'm sitting here, but something is gravely wrong. Babby Lita Tyler from the Live Journal days was busy having a panic attack, and the current rendition was teetering between excitement and checking the tea for hallucinogenics. That said, my sobriety confirmed, I did manage to summon enough of my faculties to find out that the AP designer and I shared a dress in common, and that Amai Kira's favorite of the prints she's designed is Charlotte's Bear. These two small details still loom large in my mind, and I cannot begin to describe the gratitude I felt for every patron, viewer, and person who has ever watched or interacted with my salt shaker of a show that has made this happen. The tea party was absolutely phenomenal. Seeing all the attendees and their cords was amazing, and plainly speaking, I can say that Teco 2019 was the best con experience I have ever had. It is because of the efforts of so many staffers, drivers, J Fashion vendors, designers, and participants that this experience was even possible. And I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to all of you as one for your efforts. Being able to share a room with friends like Laura and Holly was the best part of my weekend, and to extend the same sentiments to the Lolita Collective once more, I want to thank them again for their part in my even being a guest in the first place. Thank you, everyone. I had a brilliant time. Meanwhile, that's all the time we have for tonight. Thank you for watching whatever this is supposed to be, and before you find near anything else to watch just to cleanse your palate, you should know that this show is sponsored in part by BB&B. &B. The jewelry they make is a tribute to the divinity of pastries, and should you be brave enough to duel me for the entirety of their stock, you can find their accessories at bbnb.net at your own peril. Link to their shop below, and to wrap things up with a big fracking bow, I would like to thank my patrons for being lenient enough with my verbosity to let me torture this 
language until it cries. The lot of you are the true MVPs. And should you like to join a group of people who have aided and abetted the murder of my mother tongue, you can head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews for more content that, at this time, has yet to be moderated by any sense of mercy. It's best to do anything else with your time. I recommend pottery. Thanks again, guys, and I'll catch you next time.